This is me running. I am running in the park like a lunatic. There are kids here. People are wondering why I'm running. It's for you people. It's for your test. This is a run, swift run. Fastest run anyone's ever done, probably. So Feiyutech was kind enough to send over their brand new gimbal, the Scorp Mini. And as you can tell from that Baywatch-esque run I had at the beginning of the video, this thing works great as a gimbal, a plain old gimbal that just wants to steady your footage, it works great. But here's the thing, this is very unique and not just for the shape and the buttons, the functionality, this can do some stuff that I haven't seen any other gimbal do, let alone one at this price point. In fact, let's talk about one right now. Just let me go get the app. Okay, so let's load up the app here. Here's the Fayou Scorp app, it's great. Great app, a lot of functionality. You can do everything from the app or everything from the touch screen and uh, you'll see my battery life is there. It says 75%. This thing's been on for hours and hours, so that is great. It's like 12 hours of runtime. That That's crazy. And you can charge it in 1.6 hours. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to scenario. Let's go to panorama. And I don't want to do a 180 panorama myself. I want my gimbal to do it for me. So I've connected a cord to my a7 III and uh, it's gonna go take some pictures now of a panorama. Isn't that cool? And I don't have to do anything. It's taken two of six so far and there's three and I'll just stop it to end this, but to show you how cool that is. Now you can also auto rotate. You know, you wanna do your booty popping and your, your tick tocking, here you go. This is, makes it super easy to pop the old booty and you can do the uh, rotation there, the Alfred Hitchcock thing. So you can just hold it and rotate it or you can, I don't know, do some kind of crazy star time lapses, something like that. And then you can also, speaking of time lapses, you can do hyperlapse, you can do static time lapse or motion, and with that cord connected to a compatible camera, then it will just start taking the photos for you. And I'll stop it right there and check this one out. This is track video, so I can set up some things here. So I'm gonna move the gimbal over here and I will stay for one second. I'll add another track and I will stay for two seconds. And then, but I will turn the gimbal this way and I will add this point and I can keep doing that, but I'll just show you how it will go when I start recording. And now the gimbal will turn on my video camera and now it's tracking where I put the points and then it stopped it because I only did it for three seconds. So you can set up points for the camera to just go around, like the, the possibilities are endless with this thing. Is this just fantastic? All of the stuff and you can control, look at this, the motor power, the follow speed, all the knob settings, the camera settings. There's just, you can do everything. Or you can just click into this part here and just control the gimbal remotely. Do whatever you want and uh, change all the things. You can also control it with your iPhone. So check that out. I don't really know how to use this part very well. I'm just, but you, you can do it. Maybe you'll have better success than, than I will. But yeah, okay, I think we got it. And if I turn it, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And now let's watch a little more of the gimbal in action. talk about the gimbal itself right now and as you can see when you take off the little plastic tripod hard plastic it's just plain plastic but it gets the job done it's sturdy once you take that off you have such a small setup and uh, if you have regular sized hands it will fit if you have really big hands maybe you'll need to keep that tripod on otherwise maybe your pinky will be dangling but I have regular hands not dainty flimsy hands nice regular man hands and uh, they fit it just right. Uh, my buddy Shane from Geeky Nerdy Techie, he did point out that if you're left-handed and your your uh, finger will hit this multifunction dial, which I'll talk about in a second. And uh, to him, that's a little annoying and that makes a bit of sense to me, but I am right-handed, so it uh, doesn't bother me. Sorry, Shane. But here's the thing, you can also grab it here 
you know, switch it here. Now, let's talk about that multifunction knob that bothered the uh, Australian Shane. See, it, this is so great. Like, look at this. You can just switch right here. This little button will switch it. Now, right now we're the roll axis and I can hit it one more time. Now it's the tilt axis, hit it again. And now it's the pan axis. Now, if you also buy their external follow focus and just wrap it around your lens, it can control that as well. You can set it up in the menu to control that. Or if your camera uh, with connectivity has electronic focus that goes with this gimbal, it can control that as well. My a7 III, it does not. And I should say this, uh, actually I should have said it right off the bat, but in the description there is a list of uh, cameras and lenses that are compatible for both balancing and also functionality when they are connected. And so you make sure that your camera and your lens is on the list because if it's not, then uh, it might be tough to balance it and uh, this gimbal might not be for you. With these lighter weight gimbals, same thing with the Zhiyun uh, Crane M3, M2S, you know, uh, they're strong motors, but you have to have a decent balance. And uh, so you want to make sure that your camera and your lens jives with that particular gimbal. So make sure you check out that list. If you have an EOS R, that has a ton of functionality with this Scorp Mini. In fact, my buddy Tim from They Make It Like That on YouTube, uh, he's got a train channel, model trains. He graffitis them. He has an EOS R and he came by a little while ago just uh, to pick up a lav mic and uh, I actually had the uh, Scorp Mini. I was testing it out at one o'clock in the morning like a lunatic. Now, do I have the volume on? Oh, look, there's Tim from They Make It Like That. This is going to be grainy and unusable. Can when you I... change my shirt to a black t-shirt and post? Nobody will be able to see your t-shirt because <laughs> it is so black here, so dark. But see, this is why it's good to have a gimbal in the darkness. I think we're at like ISO 6 million right now. Yeah, this is uh, that's a good look. That yeah. is a. Uh, it's the most flattering way to light someone, isn't it? That's what they say. Is a Natalie Portman will only be lit this way. <laughs> so it also has an FPV button right here. So the gimbal will be very responsive to your movements when you press that. You click it off, and it goes back to the setting that you are in. Of course, you can use it in briefcase mode. You can use it in under sling mode. Uh, the sky is the limit with this guy. It's just, it's a very, really unique design. And if you like it, if you're the type of person who likes this design, and I do, then uh, this might be a real treat to use. And that touch screen on the back. Oh, wow. This is such a nice looking clear touch screen, very well laid out, able to use all of the functions that you're looking for, the tick tock and the everything. It's all back here. There's also a joystick there for you to control it as well. The power button is on the other side. It is just there. You can put it into sleep mode with the power button or you can turn it all the way off. Now you, you have a trigger here. So when you press the trigger, the camera will go back to a uh, fixed starting point so that like, let's say you got the camera all messed up and you go, you just want to go back and it just goes back for you. And if you hit it three times, it goes into selfie mode. And uh, here's the thing, I will show you a problem with the selfie mode right now. So here we are now in selfie mode on the gimbal. And as you can see, it is nice and smooth. And I like that very much. But here's the problem when you're in selfie mode. If you dip it down a little bit, the handle does get in your way. So you have to be cognizant of the handle so that it doesn't obscure your lens there you know, with your field of view. Now what you can do uh, to get around that is you just uh, flip it around to regular mode. Okay. And then turn the whole thing around. And now I've turned the entire gimbal around and I, uh, I can now see myself. I don't have access to the joystick as much, but because it has this fantastic little uh, dial here on the side, why is your radio so loud? You can go up, tilt up or down, or I can program this dial to go side to side. But right now, since I'm in pan follow mode, I uh, use the quick dial here to go up and down. Problem solved if uh, you're finding that the handle is getting in your way. But look at this nice light setup. So there you go. In order to shoot this in selfie mode, I wouldn't use selfie mode. I would just use it like this and then manipulate 
this guy here, or if you wanted it to be the pan, uh, the I'm sorry, the be the tilt, you go with this right here, and now I've got it in pan follow, and I've got it in tilt, so uh, there's no handle getting in the way. They call it 4-in-1 because it can hold big cameras and small cameras, GoPros, it comes with a GoPro mount as well, and phones, it comes with a nice phone mount as well. And now the phone has more functionality as well because you can go into the app and uh, do things like tracking. So you can find a subject, track it on the phone, and the gimbal and the phone will track it for you. So that is very cool. So if you want to use your phone with the gimbal, you get even more functionality. Now, is it perfect? No, it definitely is not. I would like to see more compatibility with my cameras and my lenses, the ZV-E10. It only has the kit lens listed as compatibility. The a7 IV, not listed at all. So for me, that those are big drawbacks, but uh, also the balancing. I don't like balancing this gimbal. I don't like balancing gimbals in general, but I find this one to be more difficult than any other gimbal that I have balanced. You can get used to it. It's like when you buy a new car. You can get used to the interface and uh, eventually you will learn how to balance it. I have it down now where I, it doesn't take me too long to balance it, but it is still much more delicate to balance than other gimbals. There is just no stiffness to the arms whatsoever when you're trying to balance. So even if you're off by a millimeter, it'll just flop over. And also the knobs for balancing. It looks nice to have these fat little knobs here with no switches on them, but I find them cumbersome to use. I find that sometimes they stick if you twist them too hard and uh, then it's hard to twist them back. You, in order to have them locked, you twist it one way. Uh, to have it unlocked, you twist the other way. So sometimes you don't know if you've locked it and uh, the camera will just, you know, fall over because I forgot that I didn't lock it by twisting it, which is certainly user error, but because you visually can't see if it's locked or not, then that is a bit of a problem. And uh, yeah, I just, I wish they would go back to their old system of levers so that you wouldn't have to use these knobs. Now, as friends of the channel know, I have a Zhiyun Crane M3 and an M2S. Now, I think that the M3 feels more premium and it suits my workflow a little bit better because it uh, packs up so small in my little messenger bags when I'm taking it along. Like this does pack up nice and flat and you can lay it in a backpack. But this guy right here, I mean, when he's packed up, it's just it's just a little tube and that is it. So I, I like that and it's much easier to balance. At least for me, it is much easier to balance and also the quick release plate too. One, you can take the quick release plate off this and then just put it right back on. Whereas this guy, if you take the quick release plate off, when you put it back on, there's no real way to put it exactly where you had it unless you guess because it doesn't have any kind of stopping mechanism. So once you take off this quick release plate, then you, oh, I should have turned that off. Now you have to rebalance it again. You know, I can put it back to kind of where I had it, but you see there is flopping down now. Now I have to kind of rebalance it. And then you have the M2S and this thing is just so small and light. So this one here I think is uh, 780 grams and the Crane M3 is a little over 800 grams. And this guy is something like, I don't know what it is. It's like 600 grams. It is so light. It feels like you're carrying nothing. So if your lenses and cameras jive with this guy here, like my, like say uh, ZV-E10 and the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8, then this is just the most ridiculously small, easy, to carry around and once again, easier to balance. But here's the thing, if you like the functionality of this guy or you need cameras that have bigger payloads that don't fit on these guys, well then there's no comparison. Then this is your gimbal because these things, the, the Zhiyuns, they don't have all of that functionality that you have with all those unique features and they hold what they can hold. Now also, you know, check out my reviews on these two gimbals and in the descriptions of those reviews, you will see what cameras and lenses are compatible with uh, those two gimbals. So that way you can pick the best gimbal based on the cameras that you own.
So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching and thanks to Fiutech for sending over this cool little gimbal. And uh, you know, the links are in the description, affiliate links to make me rich. This is gonna retail for about $299 when it's full price. But right now it is a Kickstarter campaign if you're watching this early and uh, you might be able to get yourself a good deal. Now they're selling like hotcakes, so maybe the Kickstarter campaign will be sold out. I don't know, but uh, yeah, check out the link. And if you're interested in something like this, give it a whirl. If you don't mind uh, balancing something that's a little more difficult than usual to balance, at least in my opinion, maybe I'm just not good at balancing this particular gimbal. That is certainly possible. But that was to me the biggest drawback because once it was balanced, it is such a fun, good gimbal to use. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye bye. But hey, while you're here, why don't you click on the video about the Zhiyun Crane M3 and see if you like that gimbal compared to this gimbal.